All right, now let's see another ramification of the definition of conditional probability. We'll just rewrite it in a way that will be useful for solving problems that don't immediately present themselves as using conditional probability. So here we've written the probability of A and B is the probability of A given B times the probability B, or the probability of A and B as the probability of B given A times the probability of B. We can do this in general when we have uh, a partition a1 to an of omega, or actually b for that matter, we'll see in a second. But let's just start off with n equals 2. So the partition would be a and a complement. And now we take b and we write the probability of a of b given a times the probability of a, and the probability of b given a complement times the probability of a complement. And you see here, we could have picked anything we wanted for a and a complement. That was just a useful technique. So it's just if sometimes it's useful to split up the probability of B into knowing some extra information. And here we're quickly writing down the proof of why this is true. And the idea is you write that B intersect omega is just B. And then you write omega as A union A complement. And then you distribute the intersection across. And we get the, that it's the set union of two sets. A intersect B and B intersect A complement. But those two sets are disjoint. So they form a partition of B, and whenever you have a partition of B, the probability of B is just the sum of the probability of the partition terms. And then, using the uh, conditional probability, we can write A intersect B as probability of a, B given A times the probability of A, and A in complement intersect B as the probability of B given A complement intersect, I mean times A complement. And now let's go ahead and see how the more general formula can be written. All right, now back to the more general case where we have n sets, a1 to an, that are a partition of omega, or for that matter, just a partition of the event b. Then we can write the probability of the event b as a sum over the probability of b condition that ai happened times the probability of ai. And that summation notation is just notation for the probability of a given b given that a1 happens times the probability of a1 plus the probability of b given a and all times the probability of an all the way down to the end. All right, so now let's do an example. Let's say that we have two boxes. We'll label one box h for heads and box t for tails and the idea is that we're going to flip a fair coin and we're going to see which and we're going to pick a ball from the box according to whether we get a head or a tail. So if we get a head, we draw from the head box. If we draw a tail, we get from the tail box. All right, now notice that the head box has four balls in it. Two are black and two are white. And the tail box also has four balls, but only one of them is black. So we're going to, again, flip a coin, a fair coin, and pick the box according to heads and tail. Now let's let A be the event that we pick a black ball. So it's not immediately obvious what's the chance of picking a black ball in this kind of more complicated procedure. But if you know which box you're picking from, it's pretty easy. So if we say, what's the probability of picking a black ball given that I know that I'm picking from the H box? Well, that's a relatively straightforward calculation because we have four balls in there. Two are black and two are white. So it's 2 over 4, which is 1 half. And similarly, if we now say I know that I'm picking from the tail box, then I have two black, one black ball and four balls total, so it's one-fourth the probability. And of course, the probability of picking from the tail box is just the chance of getting a tails when I flip the coin, which is one-half, because we said it was a fair coin, which is the same as the probability of picking from the tail box, which is also one-half. All right, now putting this all together, we can use this law of total probability that we just learned to write the probability of A is the probability of A given that we pick from the head box times the probability of picking from the head box plus the probability of getting a black ball when we pick from the tail box times the probability of picking a tail box. Now what at first seemed like a complicated thing to calculate, we've broken up into the small elements that we know the answer to. We've already calculated them all. So 1 half times probably getting a head from the head box is 1 half, plus the probability of getting black from the tail box, which is 1 fourth, times the probability of picking from the tail box, which is 1 half. And now if we multiply these all out, we get 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, which is just 3 eighths.
And so that's the chance. The chance of picking a black ball is 3 8 Now there's a different way of organizing this, which is sometimes called a tree diagram, which you may have seen before. Um, I don't want you to get too reliant on them. They're useful, but they can also be a crutch, because breaking up into probabilities like we just did using conditional probabilities is a much better technique. But the tree has its advantages, and so here let me slide the paper and show you the tree that I just drew. So what it says is that I've there are two options. Either I pick from the H box or pick from the T box. And those each have with probability one half, so that's why there's a one half on those legs. And then once I pick from the H box, the probability of picking black is one half, and the probability of picking white is one half. Once I've picked from the T box, the probability of picking black is one fourth, and the probability of picking white is three fourths. And now each of these different paths along here are disjoint, so the probabilities just add. Now the probability, so I just find all the paths that lead me to a black box. Well, there's the top one, which goes one half, one half, which has a probability of one fourth, and the bottom one, the bottom upper branch, which is one half times one fourth, which is one eighth. And since those paths are disjoint because they're separate parts of the tree, I just add them up, which is three eighths, which is exactly what I did before. It's just a different way of understanding what I did before.